Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Room for Discussion and the ongoing media coverage of Russian war against Ukraine, the biggest war on European soil since World War II. The lack of Ukrainian perspective stands out. That's why we are happy to announce the start of our new special series of interviews with Ukrainians, the fight for freedom. We're sharing personal stories. We shall talk about crucial topics like war modernization, rehabilitation, and volunteering to shed, to shed a light on the realities faced by those every day in Ukraine. Our guest today was once a member of the Ukrainian parliament and is currently fighting at the front line, protecting his country. He specialized in uh, drone warfare. We would like to acknowledge that uh, our guest today is currently on the front line, meaning there may be some internet disruptions or some emergencies. Uh, from our end, we will try to do uh, everything possible to make sure the connection stays uh, good. Perfect. Without further ado, please welcome Yehor Sobolev. Hello, Yehor. Can you hear us? Hello. I can hear you. I can see you. It's glad to see you all. Very well. Uh, well, you're welcome to Room for Discussion. We hope you're doing well. Uh, you've been fighting for over two years now, and despite those circumstances, you still uh, agreed to this interview. What motivated your decision to join us today? Uh, first, uh, I don't think uh, this is only a Ukrainian war. Uh, I think uh, this is part of uh, much more biggest and much more dangerous uh, conflicts uh, between uh, free countries and undemocratic countries. Uh, second, uh, I think uh, this is a very hard, uh, but in the same uh, time, a very important thing uh, to fight what we are fighting for here. And I'd like to share uh, my thoughts, my feelings, my experience uh, with you, Yoth, uh, because uh, soon uh, the planet will be in your hands. So before the invasion, you had quite a varied career, journalism, uh, IT, also in politics. Can you maybe tell us about your role uh, to, becoming a Ukrainian, uh, to becoming a member of the Ukrainian parliament? Well, uh, before that, uh, I used to be a journalist for 17 years, and uh, it was uh, a time of uh, presidency of uh, Mr. Yanukovych, uh, who was a gangster uh, in his past, who was a pro-Russian leader, and uh, he was a great corruptioner. Uh, it was uh, 2000. 10, 2013, uh, and uh, at the moment I felt as uh, a journalist uh, that I am absolutely inefficient. Uh, we, as an investigative team, uh, at the time uh, discovered a lot of uh, big uh, corruption schemes, but uh, nothing uh, happened uh, after that. And that was uh, the biggest motivation uh, for me to join politics, uh, to become a political activist. Uh, I organized with uh, my friends uh, quite revolutionary uh, organization, civic organization, and we were among uh, initiators uh, of so-called Yevromaidan uh, when by the way, Yoth uh, has played an important, extremely important role, especially in the first period. Um, so after that, uh, we call it in Ukraine a revolution of dignity, and a coach fled to Moscow, and we uh, won our freedom, uh, we won our European choice, uh, and for me, it uh, was logically uh, to run uh, for the office, and uh, I was elected in 2014 
And in the parliament, I was elected as a chair of our anti-corruption uh, committee because of my previous uh, job as an investigative journalist who was strongly against corruption. And uh, can you perhaps reflect on why Ukrainians wanted those closer ties with the euro? Because a lot of sacrifices were made in that revolution. Well, for me, Ukraine sometimes uh, looks uh, like a, a stolen child. Uh, I mean, uh, we were a European uh, country uh, in the Middle Age. Uh, we had very good development and uh, very uh, strong ties with other European countries. Not only our neighbors like Poland, Czech Republic, but also with France, uh, with England, uh, medieval uh, time, I mean. Uh, and then we were ruined uh, by Mongols. Uh, that what we can feel now. I think, uh, the same problem, uh, the same invasion from the east, and they simply demolished uh, our state, our civilization. Uh, so for us, what we're doing now, it's like uh, to uh, rebirth uh, ourselves, to uh, go uh, to the road again, uh, where we were hit. Uh, many centuries ago, uh, to become a uh, free people in our own free country, uh, with dignity, with our own plans, uh, with uh, our desire to have uh, our destiny in our hands, and to be good neighbors uh, again. Uh, that's why I am really excited about uh, current support uh, from Netherlands, uh, from ex actually the whole civilized world uh, now is helping Ukraine uh, from the United States to Japan, including Australia, all uh, European Union. It's very uh, inspiring. And uh, for us, it's another proof uh, that we should be and can be uh, among uh, free nations. Uh, we can uh, build uh, our future uh, together in peace, uh, dignity, uh, prosperity, and what is most important for all Ukrainians uh, in freedom. So I think freedom is this uh, ultimate dreams that Ukrainians were pursuing back then. But uh, as we know, after the 2014 revolution, Russian aggression followed, annexation of Crimea, uh, war of 2014. And uh, with your background in studying history, were you surprised by, by those uh, attacks? Or was it just history repeating itself, you know, with the Russian imperialistic conquest? Uh, it's, in fact, uh, a hardest question because what uh, Russia always uh, does uh, after invading other countries, uh, including Ukraine, uh, they always try to erase uh, your memory, uh, to erase your self awareness, to erase your culture. And uh, after uh, last big occupation uh, that uh, unfortunately, was uh, successful after the uh, First World War. Um, Russians uh, started simply to diminish uh, Ukrainian language, uh, Ukrainian culture, even understanding uh, that we are Ukrainians. That's their tactic uh, and strategy, in fact, uh, for centuries. Yeah. Uh, they invade you, uh, they kill you, uh, they rape your wives uh, or even daughters, 
And then after that, after establishing a big like concentration camps in all countries, uh, they start uh, great propaganda. And that propaganda uh, tells you, you are not Ukrainian, you are Russian, we love you, you are our brother or sister uh, or whoever you are, among the rights people. And uh, they wash your brains. Uh, your children uh, are becoming maybe not Russians, but people without clear understanding who you are. Uh, your great children can even think they are Russians, and uh, they send uh, this uh, new generation uh, to invade other countries. That's uh, the whole uh, tactic again and strategy for the whole uh, Russian um, history. I, I mentioned uh, Mongols. Uh, Mongolia now is a peaceful country and. Uh, is a partner of Ukraine. But unfortunately, uh, Russia as empire, as an uh, aggressive state, inherited uh, these old tactics from all these times when they invaded other nations and sent them to invade other nations uh, under their uh, management. And that's what Russia is doing now here in Ukraine. We uh, met uh, on frontline people from our occupied territories, uh, from Crimea, from uh, Donetsk, even from Kherson and Zaporizhia, uh, part of uh, these regions are under occupation. And uh, they simply forced uh, our people to fight with uh, us. Uh, they ordered them uh, to go and to fight or to be killed. Uh, without any uh, chance to survive. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this tactic is quite efficient. It, it is, of course, bloody uh, and human, but it is efficient. And that's what we now are trying to explain to other people in, in Ukraine and in other nations uh, who maybe don't understand uh, this uh, danger uh, properly. If Ukraine uh, is defeated, then Ukrainians uh, will be mobilized uh, by force uh, by Russian government to invade Poland. Uh, we are friends uh, with Poland now. We, we are very good friends. We are brothers like uh, with the uh, uh, Baltic states. And uh, occupied uh, Ukraine will be mobilized and sent to invade uh, these uh, good neighbors, good brothers, good partners now. Yeah. So yeah. we are fighting here not only for our freedom, but uh, for preventing such uh, new wars uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So to briefly touch on what you mentioned, that historically speaking, the Ukrainian culture, the Ukrainian people have always been suppressed like hundreds of years, especially during Stalin. But would you say that during the initial invasion in 2014, was this a wake-up call for Ukrainian identity? Uh, you are right, because uh, we live in last Russian uh, occupation uh, more than 70 years, yes, uh, since the end of World War II until uh, 1991. And a lot of... Uh, children, uh, a lot of adults uh, were raised in this propaganda and they simply forgot about all these uh, historical lessons. Uh, they uh, haven't understood uh, that um, they are under occupation. They haven't understood that they are forcibly uh, forgot their languages, uh, their culture, and so on. And in some sense, a uh, new invasion uh, helps Ukraine and many Ukrainians uh, to recall all this important knowledge. And now all these previous wars uh, are not history for us. We can feel it, we can understand it much more stronger than when we can uh, understand that in schools or universities. 
so uh, in some sense uh, Putin's aggression uh, helps Ukrainian to become not only stronger uh, but uh, to become uh, more Ukrainian <laughs> to a lot of uh, generation of my son uh, he's uh, 16 now uh, they forcibly uh, actually by, by their own decision uh, stop any communication in Russian language uh, they forgot Russian uh, pop culture they forgot Russian YouTube uh, and so on because uh, they realized uh, this is not about culture, uh, this is not about language, uh, this is not about YouTube, this is like a part of an informational war uh, against uh, their nation. Uh, the popularity of uh, our language, our history, um, our culture uh, is flourishing uh, during uh, the war. Uh, and this is a, a real consequences. Uh, Ukraine's uh, YouTube's uh, historical chain channels are now beating all records uh, in our country uh, and that of course is uh, a price but also a result uh, of uh, our new war uh, for independence with all the enemy okay uh, we would also like uh, to spend a little bit more time focusing on the war that started in 2014 uh, what interests me is your reaction towards the uh, ideas in the West that were back then, you know? The, whether you understand why West was not uh, ready for this. Well, uh, we can understand that. Uh, I was in Parliament at the moment, and uh, we all live in democratic country, and we understand that when you are in democratic country you don't want to fight especially you don't want to fight in another country you, you don't want to fight in any country uh, starting from yours uh, and as a democratic uh, normal people uh, you want to have good relations with all nations want to have good trade uh, good cooperation cultural exchange uh, so I think it's absolutely uh, normal uh, for countries like uh, United States, uh, countries from the European Union, uh, to uh, stop uh, and to cut, uh, even thinking uh, about uh, all these uh, challenges uh, that uh, the world is facing now. It's very hard. Uh, for me, uh, was uh, to join uh, our territorial defense unit before the war, because I was a, like an absolutely uh, happy man. I uh, do have beautiful wife, the most beautiful in the world. Uh, I have four children. Uh, I had great career. I had a lot of good friends here and abroad. I was absolutely a happy person. Uh, and then uh, you should realize, no, it's time to fight. It's time to defend what you love uh, and what you uh, trust in. And uh, you, you should start to train you with machine gun now, with drones. Uh, you should risk your life. You should lose your friends. And it's absolutely a great and normal challenge for every normal person uh, in democratic country and in democratic uh, world in whole. So I think this slow, maybe not responsible reaction from uh, the United States, from European uh, Union, uh, at the beginning was like a logical re relation, uh, a re reaction from uh, democratic countries. Uh, but now uh, what we see, and we uh, see that with uh, uh, understanding and support, uh, even such countries like France or Italy, 
or Germany, uh, who didn't care a lot about this invasion in the past, now are becoming uh, a very great uh, partners and very active players uh, in stopping this invasion and uh, restoring uh, peace in our continent. Mm. So despite uh, hopes of peace, Ukraine has been facing Russian aggression not two years ago, but for the last 10 years. Um, and they also started a full-scale invasion on the 24th of February 2022. You were in Ukraine at that moment, and you were also uh, fighting. Could you reflect on your experience in the first week of the invasion? Well, uh, I told you that I decided to join uh, our Territorial Defense Unit uh, before explain, this great you, invasion. Could you explain the Territorial Defense Unit for the people in the audience? Just briefly. Oh, <laughs> we had a regular army uh, when you are uh, yeah, when you were in a regular army, you should be soldier and uh, officer uh, all the time, uh, like uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days, uh, all year. You are uh, you, you are serving, yes. And territorial defense was a military uh, organization uh, that um, lets. Uh, actually uh, civilians uh, like me uh, to start our training, but without uh, losing our jobs, uh, our happy life uh, with our families, we uh, had like uh, a opportunity to train ourselves with guns uh, every th Saturdays. Uh, in the uh, nearest uh, forest uh, or fields uh, near Kiev, where I live, uh, where I lived before the invasion. Uh, and uh, it was a very useful time, but uh, after the start of big invasion, uh, territorial, all territorial defense uh, was mobilized uh, like a regular army uh, and uh, became a part of a regular army and all these civilians uh, became soldiers officers uh, immediately uh, in the first day uh, of uh, this uh, invasion great invasion from russia uh, we were gathered uh, in the place uh, that was uh, actually uh, defined before. Uh, that was a good result of our training, so of our self-organization. Uh, and we had guns, uh, we had uniform, uh, we had orders. My first uh, order was to uh, prevent uh, possible uh, paratroopers uh, attacked uh, on Juliana airport. Uh, this is Kyiv uh, airport, oh. and it was oh. very important to stop Russians uh, to land in Kyiv uh, near the center. Uh, that was their plan. Uh, and uh, my second mission uh, was to stop uh, Russia army from Bucha. Uh, Bucha is now quite unfortunately known place uh, for uh, bloody killings rapes and other tortures uh, than russian uh, did there but at the moment it was uh, the place uh, where we stopped them uh, my uh, second position was on bridge uh, between uh, bucha that was under uh, russian occupation and uh, Irpin, uh, a small city uh, that uh, is located uh, from on western part uh, from Kiev, and uh, is a very important uh, place and position to defend to to stop um, Russians there. Because if they took Irpin, uh, they could sell uh, the whole city, the whole capital. Uh, where was my wife and uh, other civilians uh, with their ugly bombardments? Uh, that's the, another tactic simply to 
uh, sell everything uh, what they can. Uh, and uh, we managed that. Uh, we stopped them in European. Uh, we stopped them on that uh, bridge. And uh, I was fighting there till the uh, victory uh, in Kiev battle uh, when the two Russian armies were defeated and withdrawn uh, from Kiev region. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my first two missions. Okay, but uh, a lot of people were giving Ukraine uh, a matter of three days to fall. Yet here we are in the third year of this war. Uh, in your view, uh, how did Ukraine manage to withstand those initial days of invasion? Uh, first, uh, Ukrainians uh, have resistance uh, in blood uh, because we were uh, suppressed by Russians many times in our history and we maybe even uh, not aware of that, but we feel that, that this is a very huge obligation of every person to fight for our freedom uh, because in occupation, all our uh, lives uh, will be broken and uh, demolished, and all our relatives, uh, our closed um, uh, person, uh, will be in great danger. So, millions of Ukrainians uh, uh, joined uh, the army in uh, the first week. Uh, the first few weeks, I would say, uh, and uh, it was a very important factor when simply people, ordinary people, with bravery uh, to stop this invasion. And another uh, factor was that Russians uh, were not predicting uh, such resistance. Uh, so they marched uh, in Ukraine uh, from different sides. Uh, with the big columns uh, of uh, big armies. And uh, we started to attack all these columns from uh, different positions. And it was very um, good, uh, well-organized, uh, very efficient uh, tactic of uh, uh, resistance. Uh, that's why they first stuck and then uh, should withdraw from Kyiv, uh, Chernigiv, uh, Sumer region, and th that's how we um, actually uh, won our first, maybe most important uh, battle in that war. Thank you. Uh, and obviously you've been fighting for over two years now. As you look back on that time, uh, do you perceive it as a disconnected sequence of events, or does it form a clear story in your mind? Uh, I can get it. Uh, get, I can't get it. Uh, sorry. Uh, so if, you look, again. if you look back on those two years, in your mind, is it just uh, different stories that pop up, or uh, can you clearly follow, you know, this uh, storyline? Who? Huh. I think every soldier. Uh, wants to wake up and to realize that it was simply a nightmare and everything is fine, we are in a peace uh, country, everything is alive and uh, tomorrow is bright uh, and safe for us, uh, but it isn't. Uh, all of us uh, w was in a very dangerous uh, situations. Uh, and the greatest danger, uh, and uh, many of us already dead. Um, when you are fighting, you have no space uh, in your soul to think a lot about uh, dead people. I think after the victory, uh, we will cry a lot about our friends, uh, about mm -hmm people we knew, but now uh, we simply know that and know that we should stop 
uh, new deaths, uh, new occupations. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this is uh, uh, the same story. In fact, this is uh, the same story from <laughs> Mongols. Uh, but uh, every day is like a, a whole life. That's what I like uh, on the front line. Uh, when you finished uh, your mission uh, successfully, uh, you are the happy person uh, in the world. Uh, you are alive. Uh, uh, you made what you should uh, do. And you uh, have this feeling of excitement every day. Uh, but in the same time, of course, every uh, time you are very worried about the future and especially about uh, your family. I, I think every night uh, and uh, every day about my daughters, about my son, about, of course, uh, my Marichka, uh, that's my wife's name. Uh, I love them and uh, they are under, as millions of Ukrainians, uh, under this uh, continuous uh, rocket attacks, uh, drone attacks. Uh, so this is uh, the dark part of our uh, current life of all of us. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot, the history, the invasion. But where are you at the moment? I see a flag behind you, you're at the front line. Can you tell us where you are and what you're currently doing? Uh, well, uh, now, I'm, now I'm an officer. Uh, I started uh, a war, the, the war as a private, uh, and now I'm an officer, and uh, I run a special uh, force team on the Zaporizhia front line. Uh, we uh, um, have a very great team of pilots, uh, UAV pilots. Uh, this is our main weapon. Last year we destroyed like a regiment of uh, Russians uh, by our uh, UAVs and uh, lost only one uh, person. Uh, few pilots also were wounded, uh, but fortunately all of them alive. Also, we do have a very good uh, snipers uh, team and uh, electronic warfare team. Uh, we are on the Parisian front line. We are very active, quite efficient, and uh, do what we can do uh, to bring uh, the victory to all uh, our people. And how big is a regiment? You, you mentioned that you destroyed a regiment. What do I have to have in mind? Uh, yes, because uh, drones uh, help you not only uh, to attack, but to um, uh, like uh, confirm uh, results uh, of uh, your at uh, attacks. Uh, because every drone... Uh, has a camera, uh, some of them a very good one. Uh, so we understand uh, very well that we last year destroyed uh, 75 uh, Russian tanks and armored machines, uh, 15 pieces of artillery, and so on. And this is the... Uh, weapon for the whole regiment. But uh, how many people? Uh, what we are doing, uh, we uh, first at the moment, uh, uh, at the moment we uh, start usually our day with reconnaissance flight. Uh, this is a, a small good planes uh, with good cameras. Uh, they photo all uh, areas that are interested uh, us. Uh, then we send uh, our kamikaze uh, drones uh, for, to attack all we found on our land from uh, the aggressor. And then uh, at, the, at night uh, we bomb them uh, from uh, UAV bombers, uh, night bombers, with big uh, avia bomb. 
this uh, this uh, night we destroyed in, uh, one big uh, mortar uh, and two other important positions of uh, uh, Russians uh, using these uh, night bombers. Uh, but just to clarify, regiment, uh, how many people is in one? Uh, well, actually, we don't think we can claim about uh, infantry uh, because uh, when you bomb a tank, uh, you can be sure uh, that you strike it, uh, hit it, and has uh, and have a result. Uh, when you are attacking uh, positions. Uh, with occupants, uh, it's very hard to as assess uh, how many occupants are injured uh, or killed and so on. So, so in my unit, we actually calculate uh, only uh, tanks, uh, artillery, uh, and uh, other important uh, like uh, weapon. Uh, and uh, if you calculate all our results uh, for last year, it is a, a regiment's weapon. That, that's, uh, that's how we have yeah. this uh, accession. But it's hard to say uh, about uh, enemy soldiers, uh, about all these uh, aggressors, uh, because uh, it's hard to uh, assess uh, their losses. You should be among them. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, your unit works with drones. Uh, would you say that drones have revolutionized the battlefield? Absolutely. Uh, drones uh, has, uh, have changed, uh, and uh, uh, this whole idea is changing uh, the nature of war. Because uh, before that war, uh, war was like a chess. Uh, one side... Uh, made uh, a step, then another side reacts, and uh, that's uh, how it worked. Uh, now we are in online battle. When uh, Russians move uh, uh, their troops, we uh, see that immediately on a line base. And they, uh, unfortunately, also see uh, our movement uh, and uh, our reactions. So this is absolutely much more quicker and much more tougher war than it was before when you can, for example, uh, uh, prepare and grow a lot of troops for a big uh, attack uh, as it was, uh, for example, during World War II uh, or, or in many previous wars. Uh, now, every soldier, uh, every tank, uh, every mortar, uh, every howitzer, uh, in fact, uh, is open uh, to the enemy. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the war is beca has become um, an online thing, and it requires uh, new management and a lot of other uh, innovations. Mm -hmm. So, obviously the drones have a lot of success. Uh, you mentioned that you destroyed a whole regiment. Um, but are there also limitations to these drones? Um, what are the limitations of the drones? Because I know jammers exist. Uh, are there like a lot of things that they still cannot do? Yes, uh, all drones uh, actually uh, are run by people, by pilots, uh, uh, through uh, radio signal. Uh, and uh, this radio space uh, is uh, also a field for battle now. Uh, and this uh, uh, EW uh, unit uh, that we do have here uh, is responsible for understanding where our uh, Russians uh, UAVs and to jam them. Uh, th that's what, of course, uh, Russians uh, do also. But uh, what we can predict right now 
AI uh, technology is uh, becoming uh, more strong, cheap, cheaper, and uh, efficient mm -hmm. uh, here. And uh, we are going to test uh, drones uh, with AI uh, chip. Uh, and in that case, uh, you shouldn't run uh, every actual uh, um, movement of your drone. Uh, you can simply uh, program it uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, the computer inside uh, will manage uh, the whole uh, attack. Uh, I don't know if your generations uh, uh, are familiar with the movie Terminator, Terminator? or maybe Matt. Yeah. You are. Yes, I think, <laughs> so, uh... unfortunately, uh, this uh, movies uh, are becoming the reality uh, now and uh, uh, we can predict even now that uh, in the nearest uh, years uh, there will be more drones on the front line than soldiers and uh, uh, I think that uh, soldiers uh, should uh, be all the time underground not in uh, trenches uh, that uh, it is now, but uh, in tunnels. Uh, and uh, all uh, front line uh, will be uh, in drones, mm -hmm. and drones uh, will dominate in every space. It's not about an air, uh, you know, that uh, our uh, Ukrainian forces are extremely innovative and extremely successful on sea uh, with drones. Our drones uh, actually has destroyed a third of Russian uh, fleet uh, on uh, the Black Sea. And uh, we all have desire uh, to finish uh, this job. So you've, quite, you've painted quite a picture talking about Terminator, the influence of drones. How far away are we from, from fighting wars only with drones? Is that a possibility? Uh, please repeat again. So how far away are we from fighting wars with only drones? Is that even a future? But there's only drones? No, I, I say this is a new reality uh, that, that is common. Uh, drones uh, that uh, communicate with each other, uh, that uh, help each other, uh, that attack and defend uh, in network. I think uh, we will see that in the nearest year, maybe two. Perfect. Very well. Uh, at this point of time, we would like to open up a floor for uh, audience questions. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, we have one question there. Uh, please be mindful of what you ask and uh, keep your question short. Thank you. Hello. Um, the Ukrainian population includes ethnically Russian and Ukrainians, uh, people who have mother tongue Russian or Ukrainian. Is it possible that any of the people who live in the Donbass with Russian affiliations have not been uh, feeling their interests were protected during the past 10 years, but now feel protected by Russia? Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, there was an echo, like in the auditor. Can you repeat this question for me using your microphones? Apart uh, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, Would you love okay, it? Yeah. Could you repeat this for? So he was basically aiming that in Ukraine there are a lot of people that speak Russian, mainly like the Donbas region, Donetsk, Luhansk, and he was kind of aiming at the idea that they kind of feel protected now by the Russian army. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so in the, past, in the last 10 years, there's been quite a lot of Russian aggression, and Russia was there in the Donbass region, uh, protecting the interests of those people. Uh, and the question is, was Ukraine not protecting the interests of those people well enough? 
<laughs> well, uh, that's what I love in, in Ukraine, uh, in our culture, in our mentality. Uh, we simply um, have no borders. Uh, we cooperate and are ready, are open to every culture. Uh, my, uh, a lot of my friends uh, are actually uh, were uh, Russian speaking. Uh, now, as I said, the situation is changing, but because of Russian invasion, because uh, for children, for adult uh, people, it's unpleasant to talk uh, Russian when you are under Russian bombs and rockets. That's like a psycholo psychological factor. But a lot of Ukrainians were Russian speaking. Uh, of course, uh, the reason for that is previous occupations uh, when uh, Ukrainian language, uh, Ukrainian education, education in Ukrainian. Uh, Ukrainian songs, uh, Ukrainian books uh, were prohibited. Th that's why we do have a lot of uh, Russian-speaking people. But it wasn't and it isn't a, a problem. Uh, in Ukraine, you can be from any country. Uh, you can be uh, with the, any culture inside. And we are uh, ready to be together. Uh, the different religions uh, here. There are a lot of different uh, nations. Uh, our president uh, is a Jew, actually. Uh, we, we, we have no difference uh, based on uh, what you are come, came from and what is your uh, past. Uh, what we want to have among us is uh, freedom. <laughs> this is <laughs> absolutely uh, honor concept for Ukraine. Uh, and uh, having this freedom may be your respect to other people. That's what we want from uh, us and from uh, other nations. And that's, uh, that's it, uh, nothing else. Uh, well, I think uh, half uh, of my unit uh, was uh, Russian-speaking before the invasion. And no problems with that. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yes, I see a hand there in the back. Please repeat it again, right? Um, yes, uh, thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, I was wondering if you have any time frame in your head about where the war is going, if you picture some kind of ending when it comes to time, or if you more go just day by day and you cannot think about when the war is going to end or is when you can go back to your family. If, you, if time is something that you can predict or want to predict in your head or if you just go day by day. I've heard only echo. <laughs> Sorry. You have to repeat it. Uh, yes, Daddy, uh, can you repeat so, it uh, for me? If you think about the ending of a war, uh, do you have some sort of uh, time in your mind? How soon it may be, or do you just go? Sorry, uh, the connection yeah. is bad. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? One minute. Yeah. One minute, sorry. Yeah. Yes, please, please. Uh, can you repeat again? Yeah, so I can see you now. <laughs> yeah, obviously you engage in this war and uh, in your mind, do you have some sort of uh, time frame, how long this will last, or do you just go day by day? Um, uh, uh, we all in Ukraine, 
now uh, uh, have in our mind uh, this book of uh, Mr. Frank. Uh, uh, he was a psychologist and a Nazi camp prisoner. And uh, he wrote a very good book about that experience and what was important and is important for us in that book that uh, you shouldn't set uh, any uh, time, any uh, like deadline uh, for you because it, it undermines uh, your mental health. Um, Again, uh, every day, uh, all of us uh, uh, dreams about uh, victory and peace uh, and normal life. But as a soldier, as a commander, as an officer, as a citizen, uh, I prepare myself uh, for a long uh, uh, road to that victory. Uh, maybe it takes years, uh, maybe it takes uh, decades. Uh, we all should fight uh, simply to survive, uh, simply to not have uh, our children dead, our wives raped, uh, our chances to have normal life uh, destroyed. Uh, mm -hmm. So, in that circumstance, we cannot afford uh, let's, let's do that for a year and then uh, surrender. Uh, thank you. Mm, unfortunate. Yeah, we will jump back to the interview right now. Okay. It has come to our attention that you're currently working with something called the Delta Awareness System, if I'm correct. Could you maybe tell the audience what this means and what it means for the war? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I cannot share uh, publicly uh, all tools, weapons, and uh, technologies uh, that we are using. Uh, what I can say is that uh, all this new digital world is becoming like the main one uh, in the battle. Uh, uh, drones uh, actually uh, will be managed uh, by applications uh, soon, as we have discussed. Yeah. Uh, so I am um, always a big fan uh, to have a new IT engineer in my unit. Uh, they first, uh, all of them uh, are good um, soldiers. Uh, a lot of them are good pilots, and all of them uh, have this uh, like algorithms uh, mind, and I love that. Uh, last guy called me uh, yesterday uh, at night, and uh, I answered him, uh, "If you an IT guy, uh, I want to uh, in uh, my unit." Uh, please come, uh, we will teach you, and you will be a very good uh, soldier, uh, I hope, uh, under uh, good management. So, IT technologies and IT people are very welcomed. In that case, we will not dive into the whole secrets uh, that you have. We will move on. Uh, Thank you. You know, right now there's uh, a lot of talk in the West about... Uh, putting Russia and Ukraine at the negotiation table to resolve this war. Uh, you, as a soldier on the front line who puts his life in risk, do you think uh, sustainable peace can be achieved through this means? Oh, it's a hard uh, question. Uh, history uh, teaches us uh, that uh, Russia uh, can be stopped only by force. Uh, they don't care about papers. Uh, they don't care about uh, agreements. Uh, they stop uh, when they understand it's impossible uh, to uh, go further. Uh, 
it's impossible to invade more it's impossible to fight more so uh we should beat them uh as an invader uh and then uh there will be a chance for peace uh when uh, not only ukraine but uh, the whole uh, democratic world uh, will be strong uh, win, will be armed uh, will be well prepared for self defense uh, then all these uh, and the democratic authoritarian countries not only russia uh, will be mm, will be quiet I wouldn't say peaceful, but we will be quiet. So uh, it's impossible, uh, you know, it's impos impossible to uh, have a peace, an agreement, uh, an understanding uh, with a, a robber uh, or rapist or killer. It's impossible in, ev in every situation. But uh, you can stop all of them having good police, uh, having a good system of law enforcement. And that's what uh, the whole world uh, now uh, should have. So just to clarify, freezing this conflict will not uh, resolve it. it. It will only postpone uh, later attacks by Russia. Uh, we um, actually uh, had a so-called Minsk agreement uh, after their invasion in 2014 and a lot of countries uh, including countries from uh, the European Union uh, United States uh, supported the agreement and Russia simply used this time uh, to build uh, grand armies uh, to arm them uh, to prepare for the biggest invasion uh, again invasion occupation other nations that's uh, their history uh, that's what uh, makes unfortunately makes a lot of russians proud uh, of their country uh, they are not proud about and they couldn't uh, about their prosperity the level of democracy uh, human rights uh, respect uh, by but they think a lot of them uh, not all, but a lot of them think, but we can fuck every country that we want to fuck. That's their like uh, national um, feeling why Russia is cool, uh, why Russia is great, as uh, they said it. Their greatness in their minds is to uh, ability to invade other countries, uh, to occupy them, uh, to uh, destroy uh, them as a sovereign uh, state. Unfortunately, uh, that's why it's impossible uh, to have uh, a diplomatic uh, communication and uh, di di diplomatic resolvement uh, of that war with them. Uh, they simply used the words uh, to have uh, to gain more time. Uh, to prepare for new invasions. And again, uh, they don't think only about Ukraine. They are openly uh, discussed invasion in Poland, in Baltic states, in Moldova, in other nations, including uh, Western uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, that's uh, their mentality. What would it mean for Europe or even the world if Ukraine does not win this war? Uh, sorry, uh, connection is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would it mean for the world and also for Europe if Ukraine does not win this war? We have discussed that with you. Uh, they mobilized, uh, occupied uh, Ukrainians and to send them with the other Russians uh, to invade uh, other countries uh, in the European Union and in these, uh, I think uh, Kazakhstan could be their next target. Uh, other countries uh, from uh, east part of Eurasia and of course uh, our western neighbors. Uh, mm. Again, that's uh, their way 
to live, uh, to be great, uh, to survive. Without wars, um, Russia always has this unpleasant uh, uh, internal situation when people uh, start to ask their government why uh, economic situation is not so good, why democracy, uh, in fact, is a fake in our country, uh, why police uh, is not a... Uh, actually option but a problem uh, for people so having wars for Russians is also a political method uh, to have their population uh, under uh, control and to use uh, their energy uh, for um, attack on other countries not uh, developing uh, their own mm -hmm. So, if I understand correctly, if Ukraine were to get captured by the Russians, the Ukrainian people will be used as well to further future wars. They will mobilize. The I'm sure that we uh, then in that scenario we will have a new big uh, world war. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, Russia, in a few uh, years, maybe. Uh, uh, prepare itself uh, and with the new occupied uh, territories uh, will attack uh, the European Union and United States. So it is very important to prevent this from happening. Could a Ukrainian victory be possible if the support from the West diminishes? Well, uh, we uh, think about that and talk about that every time. Um, this is not only our war. Uh, Mongols actually um, wasn't uh, were not stopped in Ukraine. Uh, they invaded uh, other countries, regions than uh, that are modern Poland, Hungary, uh, Austria, and so on. Uh, so it's important for us. Uh, to stop them, not only for us, but also for you. Mm. Uh, uh, I uh, like in Netherlands, <laughs> I like a lot of, I like actually all European countries, uh, every has its own uh, history, its own charm, and I hope mm -hmm. its own future. Uh, and I want all of you, uh, as our country, will be in safety, prosperity, and development. I, yeah. I want to discuss with you your ideas, uh, your dreams, uh, your, your challenges, not war, uh, not death, uh, not uh, this danger. Uh, that's why it's our common uh, obligation, I would say, duty uh, to restore peace on our uh, uh, continent and to restore rules, uh, to restore a system uh, that uh, will defend uh, this peace. Because it's a uh, war about that, that Uni United Nations simply have no power, uh, have no opportunity. They were established, this organization was established under the, after the World War II, uh, and it is to prevent new wars. And it is absolutely inefficient now. Uh, we need NATO. Uh, is also um, looks like in a big trouble uh, because of uh, great discussion in the United States. I mean, political dis discussion because of uh, other um, important factors like a low level of uh, defense uh, budget in. Most of European uh, countries, uh, uh, European Union and United States uh, are great projects, uh, strong projects, uh, famous institutions and uh, uh, spaces uh, for uh, normal life. But uh, you are all in danger. Uh, it's not about only uh, Russia. Uh, Russia uh, has a company uh, of other 
undemocratic uh, states uh, that support uh, this uh, aggression because uh, they want to use such methods uh, for their own goals in other regions, uh, in other countries. So uh, international order and uh, our common future uh, are in danger now. And uh, that's why we don't need support. Maybe we need uh, common uh, work, a common plan uh, to uh, succeed and uh, to have normal, interesting, peaceful, uh, successful uh, life uh, for all of us, of us uh, in all countries uh, on the continent. You know, to wrap up this interview, uh, I think it's important to know that despite all the initial predictions, you know, the three days that were given to Ukraine, Ukraine has demonstrated uh, remarkable resilience. Ukraine is alive, Ukraine is free, Ukraine is fighting. As we conclude, what would be your final message to our audience today here in Amsterdam? Uh, be free, just <laughs> uh, be responsible uh, for your freedom and be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be with you guys. I will return to my company. <laughs> Thank you.